Let's uh, look to the Lord as we come to uh, today's message. Clothed with power from on high. Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, that even as we hear this word this morning, Father, Lord, that there will be such a heart, a passion, a desire for each one of us, Father God, Lord, to see ourselves, Lord, as being clothed with power from on high, Father God. And for those of us who have never received, Father, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, have never received this clothing of power from on high. We will see and we will receive, Lord God. We will know how to receive this clothing from power from on high. And we will see the importance of this, Lord. We will see the value of this. We will see that this was your plan all along, Father, that we be clothed with power from on high. We commit ourselves to you. We give you praise and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, so... We're going to look at God's original plan. The first, uh, first scripture we're going to look at, if you have your Bibles with you, before, they, uh, before our media team is able to bring up the scriptures, sometimes uh, you know, it takes some time for the transitions. But if you have your Bibles with you, it's good to have your Bibles open. We are looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And this is God's original plan. We're going back to God's original plan because we want to know why is it so important? Why do we keep emphasizing that we need to be clothed with power from on high. Why is it so important? Is it something new? Is it something that we need to seek after and, and learn and be able to you know, come after God and, and plead with God and, and, and beg God and ask God to come and clothe us with power from on high? Is it only for certain people? Is it, is it only for certain occasions, certain times, uh, certain privileged people, certain people who are a little bit more holy, a little bit more pe people who, who pray a little bit more, this clothing of power from Hana, is it only for certain people? You know, is it for a certain elite that God has reserved this clothing of power from on high? Now, to, to understand why this whole message on being clothing from power from on high, we need to go back to God's original design. And God's original design is found, God's original design for man, which means God's original design for you and for me. Turn to your neighbor and say, for you and for me, all right? For each one of us, God's original design for each one of us. Now, if you have an empty chair next to you, don't tell the chair. That's God's plan for the chair, all right? Look across the room. You know, there are people, uh, there is like a red sea between the front and the back. You know, and uh, we need to somehow bridge the gap. I know there's a worship team and also the media team sitting in, at the back. And uh, praise God uh, for those of us who have been able to come this morning and uh, enjoy the presence of God. Now, those of you who are here, who are here live this morning, isn't it, you know, and maybe some of you have watched uh, the program back home, isn't it so different when you come here live? Yeah. Oh man, I tell you, it's so different. It's so different. And uh, you know, the one who can testify about that is Brother Edward. We welcome back Brother Edward, you know, he's back from... Uh, Egypt, no, Singapore, all right, and here, yeah, sorry Singaporeans, uh, God bless you, uh, Singapore is a wonderful place, praise the Lord, but this is the promised land, and uh, now there's a viral video going around that saying that Bukit Matajam is the promised land, uh, because we have dark chakui tiao, hallelujah, Penang Island doesn't have, I don't know whether they have, but that's uh, counterfeit, the real one is here. All right, so praise God, you know, Brother Edward has been listening to the, the, the uh, live stream and today life is so different when we are here live worshipping the Lord, all right, the presence of God. And you know, unfortunately, because of the restrictions, many of us can't come. I know those of you who are hungering and thirsting to come and join us. And, uh, and uh, you know, when, as soon as the restrictions are off, come back and join us and, you know, really enter into the wonderful presence of God and you will see there's such a different standing. I know, I understand many of us are, are 
restricted because of, uh, you know, you are, there's, there's uh, some issues with immunity and medication and health. And uh, because of that, you can't come. And because of, you know, I know that one especially is pregnant, if you are listening this morning, and you can't come. So it's okay. You know, we understand if there's a, this, there's a real reason for you not being able to come. But for those of us who are just, you know, uh, getting really comfortable with live stream back home, all right? Because I know many have come back and say, Pastor, live stream is so good. La. I don't have to come to church, you know. But still, there is such a difference when you come here and worship the Lord. Amen. In the, in the presence of our brothers and sisters, in the presence of, of, of uh, you know, being in, the, in this place where, you know, we have set aside to worship God and receive from the Lord. So, um, you know, coming back to God's original plan, I don't know why I got into that, but God's original plan is this, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creep and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. There are creeps on the earth. God has given us dominion even over the creeps of the earth. Hallelujah. So God created man in his own image. The image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. All right, so this was God's original plan. And this is what God said in the next slide. You see the next verse, verse 28. Then God blessed them. Everybody say, God blessed them. This is God's heart. If you want to know God's heart, you know, many times we read through the Old Testament and you see many things being said, the way God moves, the way God acts, and sometimes we get the wrong understanding of God's heart. And this is the Father's heart. This is the original plan. This is the original design. This is how it started. How did it start? God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now let's just stop here for a while and ask ourselves. Because every time... We want to know what is our purpose. Why are we here on this earth? We have to come back to this. This is God's plan. And the word that is used here is dominion. Now why is it, why is it the word dominion? So have dominion. You have to understand that the word kingdom is made up of, actually it's a composite word. It is king and dominion. Kingdom is king's dominion. Any kingdom is the dominion of the king that is over that dominion, the kingdom. And God wants to extend the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. That is his plan. His plan is that his kingdom is when Jesus taught the disciples to pray, what did he say? Thy kingdom come, king's dominion. The dominion of the king come. Thy kingdom come. The dominion of the king come on earth as it is in heaven. So God gave man this responsibility. This is God's original plan. God's original plan, he's blessed them. God starts by blessing us. God doesn't start by saying that you need to get your life right first. Only then I will bless you. See, this is the false idea that many of us have. I grew up with this. We grow up with this whole performance mentality. We grow up with this religious mentality saying that I can only be blessed if I'm doing right. You know, this morning as I was getting ready to come to church, and I, you know, I'm still so many things ru running through my head in, in terms of what I want to share and just crystallizing and allowing the light through the night last night. I don't know whether my wife realized I was tossing and turning and getting up and standing up and sitting down, praying in tongues, lying down, getting up, sitting up, you know, and just, just connecting with the Holy Spirit and saying, Lord, what do you want to speak? And this morning I got up, I felt so inadequate. After the shower, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I feel so inadequate. I feel that I am unprepared to deliver the message this morning. And you know what the Lord said to me? You are still loved unconditionally. Whether you perform or you don't perform, I still love you unconditionally. And my flesh begin to war against God. Have you ever had your flesh war against God? 
and say, how can I be blessed? I didn't prepare. I'm not ready. I didn't get all my notes in place. Of course, I got all my PowerPoint in place. But still, I say, I feel inadequate. You know, how can you bless me? God says, whether or not you are ready, whether or not you are prepared, whether or not you put in an effort, you know, even that, God said, I said, Lord, well, that one you're, you're getting a little bit too close to comfort. Whether you put in effort or not, I still love you unconditionally. Now, that's how amazing God's grace is. Hallelujah. How sweet the sound is. That means what? Oh, that means we can be lazy, we can do whatever we want, and God still loves us unconditionally. God still loves us unconditionally. But it's because of that unconditional love that we step out and we fulfill God's plan. We know that He loves us. He blessed them. He starts off, God starts off by blessing them. Doesn't this sound familiar? When Jesus was baptized and He came up out of the water, what is the first thing that the Father said? This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Doesn't it sound familiar? Doesn't it sound like the heart of the Father? Every time you start the day, every time you get up in the morning, the first thing you say is, I am blessed. Come on, everybody say, I am blessed. There's a song that we used to sing. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. You know what you're doing? You know what we are doing? We are singing scripture. We are blessed. We are the most blessed people on the face of this earth. We are blessed. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Bring my dominion. Bring the king's dominion. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is God's plan. Right from the beginning over Adam and Eve, the first created human beings on this earth, on planet earth, to bring God's dominion, to extend our job, brothers and sisters. Our design, the design of God for us is to bring His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Everywhere we go, it's about the kingdom of God. It's about multiplying the kingdom of God. It's about bringing the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Everywhere we go, we are called to multiply righteousness. We are called to speak about the righteousness of God. We are called to speak about the peace of God. The shalom of God. We are shalom carriers. Everywhere we go, where there is no shalom, we are bringing shalom into that place. That is God's plan. That is God's design for every child of God. But yet we see in the following verse that glory was lost. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. The next slide. So when the woman saw that the tree was good and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took its fruit and she ate. She ate from the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And she gave it to her husband and he ate. So the husband is the head, the wife is the neck. Okay, I was told, I was reminded a few days ago by one of the brothers in the church. All right, you are the head but your wife is the neck. So, she gave it to her husband. And what did the husband do? Poor husband. The eyes, he took it and he ate. Alright, he was, he knew. She didn't know. He knew he was not. The command was given to him, not to her. Alright, and yet, knowing the commandment, he transgressed. Eve was deceived, but Adam sinned against God. You have to see the difference here. So, ladies, you have been set free in the name of Jesus. All right? In case you're wondering, oh my God, why did Eve do that? All right? It's not, it was the deception. The eyes, and as he ate, the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. Suddenly they realized, there was a realization that something had left them. And what did they do? They went into works, they went into religion. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. What was given to them was taken away and now they had to fend for themselves. That's where the problem started. They started depending 
on their own strength. They started depending on their own wisdom. They started depending on what is right and what is wrong instead of walking with the author of life, which is what God's plan is for our lives. To walk daily. Not about what is wrong or what is right, but to walk with the author of life. They were meant to eat from the tree of life. And so, when they ate and they decided, they made a choice, God gives every one of us free will, they made a choice and they started eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, something left them. They lost not just their, their communion with God, but they left something left them. What is it that left them? Their, their outer covering. See, the, when God made men, male and female, God made Adam and Eve, He gave them a covering of His glory. We were clothed in His glory. We were covered in His glory. Why do I know that? Because when the clothing left, they felt naked and they had to clothe themselves. It was a clothing. It was a garment of His glory. The garment of glory left them. There was no more garment. So when the garment of glory left them, something else left them. They had no more authority to be fruitful and to multiply and to take dominion. To bring the dominion of God on earth as it is in heaven. Which was God's original plan. God's original design. No more glory. Ikabod. No more glory. The glory of God left them. So, how was man to come back into the original plan and design of God after Jesus died? It says here in Luke chapter 24, 49. Remember, it was the clothing that left them. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. But you are to stay in the city until you are once again clothed with power from on high. We discover here what is it that left them. What is it that was originally given to you and me. We discover here. He says, wait until you are fully clothed again. You are fully clothed again. So this is not something that is set aside for special people. This is not something that is set aside only for Certain people who are talented, who are gifted, who are holy, who are righteous, who are special, who are called, who have a ministry. This is not. This is God's design for each and every one of us. To restore us into communion with our Heavenly Father. And to restore God's original plan and design upon our life. That's the whole purpose. To restore. The purpose of the clothing of power from on high is to restore us to our rightful place. To our rightful. Without the clothing of the power from on high, we are not fully restored to what God has called us to. We are not fully restored. We are still incomplete. It's like having something. It's having a nice, beautiful wardrobe, but not putting it on. God has given us the wardrobe but we don't put it on. God has given us a good car, but we don't take and drive it. We say that it's a beautiful car, it's a beautiful wardrobe, but we, we are not taking it and we are not applying it into our lives. Just keeping it there. And God says, wait until you are clothed with power from on high. And we see here, the next verse, but you will receive power. What is this power for? What is this clothing of power from on high is for? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The Spirit of God has come upon you. You will receive power. The glory of God brings power. Brings a, the Holy Spirit brings power upon us. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What is this for? Verse Genesis 1.28, it sounds familiar. Going back to the original design. The next verse, the next slide. Genesis 1.28, drawing the parallel. I'm just drawing the parallel between Acts 1.8 and Genesis 1.28. Going back to the original design. God bless them. So now we are restored. Now when we are clothed with power from on high, we are restored. 
God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply again. Hallelujah. This is God's purpose. God's purpose is that we will be fruitful. He wants to bless us so that we will be fruitful and multiply. What is it that we are called to be fruitful and multiply? You know, many, many different interpretations. You know, many people say many different things. Fruitfulness. What does it mean by God's plan for you is not to be barren, but God's plan for each one of us is to be fruitful. What is the whole fruitfulness about? Some of us say could be the fruit of the Spirit. God wants us to bear the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Some of us say being fruitful in terms of the souls, the harvest, the multitude of the harvest. And all these things I believe are true. But I believe the key thing that you and I are called to be fruitful and to multiply is, is stated here in this verse. To fill the earth and subdue and have dominion. To bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We are called to multiply the kingdom of God. Each one of us is a portal. Each one of us is a, each, is a beach head of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. As we go out, as we step out, we are bringing the dominion of God. We are bringing, we are multiplying the dominion of God. We are multiplying the righteousness of God. We are multiplying the peace of God. We are multiplying the joy of God. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you walk into your workplace, you are called to bring in, multiply, be fruitful and multiply, bringing righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Everywhere we go, we are called to bring the kingdom of God. These are the, this is what a witnesses is called to be. This is the design of God for each one of you to be a witness. To be a light in your workplace. To be a light in your home. To be a light in your school. I am a witness of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we are. That's all we are called to do. I'm a witness of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. His kingdom resides in me. You see the kingdom of God in me. Righteousness, peace and joy in the world. I'm walking in the righteousness of God. I'm walking in the shalom of God. I'm walking in the joy of the Lord. In spite of the circumstances that are around me, in spite of the darkness that is around me, I'm a bringer of light. Hallelujah. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Be fruitful. And multiply. Fill the earth. Fill the earth with the kingdom of God. Isn't that true? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Fill the earth with the kingdom of God. From one small place in Eden. To continue to extend. To expand. To expand into each and every one of our lives and expand, expand into our families, expand into our loved ones, expand into our workplaces, expand to our business. Everywhere we are called to fill the earth and to subdue it with God's kingdom. Hallelujah. To bring the kingdom of God. This is God's plan. This is God's design. You are my witnesses to that thing. This is why Christ came into the world. If you look at the ministry of Christ, this is exactly what he did. Isn't that what he did? He brought the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that what Jesus did? Everywhere he went, he proclaimed the kingdom of God. Everywhere he sent out his disciples, what did he say? Preach the kingdom of God is at hand. Declare the kingdom of God is here and heal the sick. Let the kingdom of God manifest. Why? Because in the kingdom of God, there is no sickness and there is no disease. Everywhere I go, I bring the kingdom. I proclaim the kingdom. And when I proclaim the kingdom, the sick are healed in the name of Jesus. When we bring light and we declare to them, I said, in heaven, there is no sickness. There is no disease. So we proclaim the kingdom of God. Preach the kingdom of God. Proclaim the kingdom of God. When Jesus rose from the dead, what does he speak about? He speak about the kingdom of God. For the 40 days that we was here on this earth, he spoke about the kingdom of God. Bring the dominion of God. That's the whole purpose of being clothed with power from on high. So my question here is this. Are you clothed with power from on high? What is the answer? Sure? Yes? No? Don't know? Maybe? Not sure? Are you clothed with power from on high? Some of us are. Some of us not sure. If you are not sure, you are in the right place. 
Because the Bible says, the moment you and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we receive the clothing of the power from on high. It's just that we are not using it. We are not aware of it. We are not conscious of it. We are called to be the bringers of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We are called to proclaim the kingdom of God is within us. We are called to take dominion. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Subdue it with healing, signs, wonders, miracles, a proclamation that the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. And it's inside of me. It's inside of me. All right? That's God's plan. That's God's desire. He's already blessed us. There's something about us that is waiting to be proclaimed out. And it comes when we are aware that we are clothed with power from on high. Without the clothing from power from on high, what do we feel? We feel we are naked. We feel that we are inadequate. True or not? Many times we feel inadequate when we want to do. Doesn't, make, doesn't it make sense? We feel inadequate. We feel that, ah, I'm not qualified. I don't know whether I, when I proclaim the kingdom of God, anything is ever going to happen. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever felt that? Or have you felt that when you tell somebody about the kingdom of God, nothing much happens? Why? Because we feel that we are inadequate, incomplete. And so we need to be clothed with power from on high. It says here, John 15, 16, Jesus said this, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Why did I choose you and appointed you? That you may go and you may bear fruit. What is that fruit? That your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give you these things I command you, that you love one another. This is God's command. By this, the world will know that you are my disciples. Turn with me to John chapter 13, verse 34. If you have your Bibles with you, I didn't have that scripture in the, in the slides. But John 13, 34. This is how... The world will know that we are his disciples. John 13, 34, Jesus said this. A new command I give you. John 13, 34. A new command I give you. These are the words of Jesus. Love one another. This is how the kingdom of God, the righteousness, the peace and the joy of the Holy Ghost is proclaimed. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Hallelujah. Very simple being a disciple. What is the definition of a disciple? Jesus said the definition of disciples is very same. Very simple. Love one another. Love one another. Is it possible to love one another in the natural Sometimes we have offenses, sometimes we have unforgiveness, sometimes we have bitterness. The only way we can proclaim the kingdom is by being clothed with power from on high. Glory restored. Glory needs to be restored in each and every one of our lives. Many of us have already got the glory have already been baptized with the glory of God, have already been baptized, have already been clothed with power from on high, but we are just not exercising that clothing of power from on high. And we go back, we you know, go from one place to another. You know, just moving from being clothed. Forget sometimes we take out our clothes. All right? the, I'm not talking about the, our, these garments, the clothing of power from on high. That's God's original plan. That's all God's original design. That we are clothed with power from on high. And the reason He's clothed us is that we should go and bear fruit. Fruit of what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is what? His love. Proclaiming His love. Proclaiming His love. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is proclaimed when we love one another. When we love one another. Next verse, John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, today a lot of verses, just to lay the foundation. When the helper comes, I shall send to you from the Father, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. The Spirit of truth will testify about the Father. And you will bear witness, again the word witness here, and you shall be my witnesses. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. 
So the next verse is, next slide is this. So what is our purpose? Our purpose is to be a witness of God's love. Everywhere we go, our purpose is to be a witness of God's love. God's unconditional love upon our lives. We witness that. How how was this unconditional love shown us? How can we even talk about unconditional love? We talk about unconditional love by telling them about what Jesus did on the cross. Christ crucified and resurrected in the name of Jesus. We are witnesses of this thing. We are witnesses of God's love. God so loved us that He gave His Son, that His Son died on the cross. His love for us unconditional. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for the ungodly. We are unworthy. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. I can see you now. I can see the love in your, in your eyes. Laying yourself down. All right, Turning back the broken to life. Bringing up the broken back to life. This is our purpose. Our purpose is to go and witness this God's love. Whether through words or through otherwise, this is God's plan. This is God's design for each and every one of our lives. My purpose is to be a witness of God's love. I'm a witness of God's love to your neighbors, to your family members. Now it's Deepavali season. Are we a witness of His love? To our family members, to our loved ones. Are we a witness of His love to the people that are around us in our taman? Are we a witness of His love to the people that are in our workplace? We are called to be witnesses of His love. I am a, I am a recipient of God's unconditional love. I am a recipient. I was unworthy of that love. But today God has loved me. God has restored me. And so I am a witness of His love. I shine the light of His love. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine the light of God's love upon my life. And how can we shine the light of God's love upon our life unless we have tasted and seen His love which is good. Tasted and experienced that love of God. That love of God that is good. We are witnesses of His love. That is our call. How do I become a witness? By being clothed with power from on high. I become a witness by being clothed. When I'm clothed, I become a witness. Otherwise, I struggle becoming a witness. I need the clothing. I need to be restored to God's original plan for my life. Otherwise, I'm living below what God originally planned for my life. Something unfulfilled in each and every one of us. Something that is yearning to get out and express And be all that God has called us to be. Something that is limiting us. And what is it that is limiting us? The clothing from power from on high. So the question now we have is the third important question that we're going to cover is how to be clothed with power from on high. How am I going to be clothed with power from on high? And is this clothing of power from on high still available for us today? Or is it only during the time of the apostles? Is it only during the time of the Acts of the uh, the Acts the, the book of Acts? It says here in Acts chapter two verse thirty eight. There was a, I don't know whether you all heard this story before, but there was a, there was a, old, senior citizen at home one day at night, and there was no lights, and uh, as she was in the house, suddenly she heard some noises in the house, and she realized that there was a burglar in the house and so she was wondering what she's going to do because she's all alone she's a senior citizen so those of you senior citizen i'm giving you some tips as to what you can do so she was wondering what to do and so she just suddenly just shouted out to this burglar in the house she just shouted out x238 x238 and the burglar dropped his weapon and lied flat on the ground and then the, she managed to call the police. The police came and arrested the burglar. So the police asked this burglar, why did you surrender so fast? You know? And the burglar said, all I heard is that this lady shouted out and she said she had an axe and she had two thirty eights, which is a gun, a revolver. I have an axe, two thirty eights. Axe, 
2:38 he went on the ground and he surrendered he's very powerful acts 2:38 so now i bring you to that scripture acts 2:38 what does he say repent <laughs> and let actually she was actually shouting out to the burglar to repent <laughs> and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin but he misunderstood that let every one of you be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit she was telling the burglar repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit the gift all right and he says for the promise is to you so is it it's not just for that generation or for a certain generation but it says a promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off as many as the lord our god will call so this is relevant till today this is relevant till today the gift of the holy spirit the clothing all this means the same thing the gift of the holy spirit the promise of the father the baptism of the holy spirit the clothing with power from on high that restores us to our rightful place hallelujah how many of you like to be restored to your rightful place today or want to remain where we are to what god originally designed you for hallelujah i want to be restored he says to all the promises to all of us so how do we do this next slide okay we see here and we're going to do it this morning for those of us who have received we are going to receive a fresh infilling of the holy spirit but it says here to be clothed with power from high first thing that we need to do is click the first time is we need to request all starts with r and just remember these four r's i i practice this every day to be clothed with power from on high this is the key that unlocks the kingdom of god hallelujah that is already inside of us that unleashes us that activates us that activated all the apostles they were afraid they were scared they were hiding they went back to their old ways they lied they deceived they did all kinds of things even after they were safe but when they were clothed with power from on high things were never the same again it's very simple if you look at scripture this four simple steps the first thing is what everybody say together request request the second thing is very simple relax okay after you request don't strive after you request don't lord i don't know whether or not you know you heard me i don't know whether or not i'm going to receive just relax after you request just re everybody say together after you request relax just relax all right it's very simple no striving very simple after you request relax the third thing is receive okay relax without relaxing you cannot receive okay if you strive if you push if you tekan you know say oh lord i've requested i don't know whether i have received or not you will not receive you have to relax very important after requesting after relaxing receive and finally after receiving the last one is release release so request relax receive and release for r can we press b on your keyboard Aaron okay just press b ah okay I teach you new trick okay after you press b again it will come back ting it will appear so what are the four things we are supposed to do every day number 1 is press b again it will come back okay request matthew chapter 3 verse 11 we will go very fast because we have covered all this So it says here Matthew 3:11 Matthew Mark 1:7 As for me I baptize you with water this is John the Baptist for repentance all of us have been baptized with water but he who is coming after me is mightier than I and I'm not fit to remove his sandals he everybody say he who is he he will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire who is the baptizer Jesus is the baptizer he will baptize you so Mark 1:7 next next scripture mark 1:7 says as he was preaching after me one is coming who is mightier than i and i am not fit to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals i baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the holy spirit and the next slide is the same luke 3:16 and john 1 verse 33 it says here the one in verse john it says the one who baptizes with the holy spirit so we must request the first thing we put in is the request next scripture it says here how we are to request so i say to you all right jesus said 
Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Ask. Request is to ask. We need to request. Every day we need to request. Because it helps us in our walk, in our relationship, in our intimacy, in our closeness with, with God. It's that, it's that walking of it. It's not a begging. All right? When we talk about requests, many of us say that you know, we must sit for hours and we must beg God and we must cry out to God for the Holy Spirit. It's not in that, in that sense at all. The reason for requesting is not begging, it's not going back into performance. Because it will say then, I've got to get my life right first, I've got to set things right first, only then God will bless me, only then if I ask for the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit is only for certain people. This is the, the lie that we need to get removed from our, our minds once and for all. It's very easy to request. He says, ask and it will be Come on, everybody, say here together. Ask and it will be given to you. Ask and it will be given to you. Ask and it will be given. Hallelujah. It's very easy. Everybody say, it's easy. Come on, everybody say, it's easy. It's not hard. It's not hard. Just ask. Just ask. Request. The first thing is, when you want to be clothed every morning, when you get up, when you're on bed, when you're thinking about what you're going to go through the rest of the day, just ask. Just request. Start off with the first R. Request. Say, ask and it will be given to you. Next thing is, knock and it may be open to you. Is that right? Knock and it will be. Come on, talk to me, church. Knock and it will be given to us. It will be given to us. Okay, what is Jesus talking about here? Ask for Mercedes. Ask for BMW. Ask for Proton X50. Well, Mercedes BMW and the Proton X50. You know, it's such a big gap, right? It's not this is the, that he's talking about. What is he talking about? Ask and it will be given to you. We can misquote this scripture and talk. It's something far more valuable than the things of this earth. What is the context of this? Knock and it will be open to you. Knock and it will be open. I don't know why, whether you are here or not this morning, I cannot see you because of the light is so bright. <laughs> like Sharini said, no, I don't know that you all sat down. Okay? Talk to me so that I know I'm not alone here. Knock and it will be Oh, I've got people in the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Knock. I, I can only see masks actually. You know? All the white, white masks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knock and it will be Open. Come on, tell your neighbor, it will be open. It will be open. Not might be open. Isn't that true? Sometimes we pray like this. Lord, open. Don't know or not, love, whether it will open or not. Ask. Don't know or not, love, he will give or not. Isn't that true? We have to have that conviction. We have to have that confidence. We have to have that boldness. Ask and it will be given. Hallelujah. And what is he talking about here? If a son asks for bread from any father, will he give him a stone? If he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent? If he asks for an egg, will he give him a You know, if human fathers know not you know, to give bad things, if you being evil as compared to God, eh? you know, the way, the contrast that is given here is, if you then being evil know how to give good things to your children, what is he talking about here? How... Come, let's say this together. One, two, three. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So the first thing you do in the morning is what? Request. Just request. Ask God. Ask God for the... Ask who? Ask Jesus. Because Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Jesus Baptize me. Fill me again. I request. If you have not been baptized, ask him to clothe you with power from on high again. It's an act of dependence. It's a language of love. It's not a language of a slave. It's not the language of a beggar. But it's the language of a son asking the Father, the Heavenly Father. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. And the language used here is ask and keep on asking. Not because of that, that mentality of a slave or servant which we are taught many times. 
Because if you don't keep on asking, God will not give. No, it's not that. He wants you to come back again and again and again and receive more and more and more and not be satisfied with what you already have and say, God, I want more. I want more of you, Holy Spirit. I want more of you, Holy Spirit. Come on, everybody say, I want more. I can hear more from people coming from the house. Come on, church. Say, I want more. Hallelujah. I want more, Holy Spirit. More of you. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And not a slave driver. But you're asking our gracious, heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And what does that do every day when you do that? It brings you even closer to the heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, you are so close to me. Heavenly Father, I know that you never leave me nor forsake me because I can ask you. I, I, I tell you, if I were you, and I don't know whether I'm you, but I'm not you, I will ask more than once a day. Isn't that true? I ask in the morning, I ask in the afternoon, I ask at night, I ask any time of the day. I ask throughout the day. Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, clothe me. Lord, clothe me. Lord, I want some more. Lord, give me another dose. Even more, Lord. Even more of the Holy Spirit I want. Request. Request as a son. Request as an heir of God. Hallelujah. Co-heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. Be clothed with power. First thing is request. Second thing after request is relax. What is relax? Relax. Where? Well, Bible never say relax. Huh? But I'm using the word relax. Relax is what? Just belief. What is relax? Just belief. Once you've requested, just, just what? Just belief. Alright? Just belief. Don't strive anymore. Once you have requested, believe that you have received it. Acts 10.43 says this, To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive the remission of sin. Relax. Just receive the remission of sin. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. Just fell. While Peter was still speaking, they just received. The Holy Spirit fell. The Holy Spirit fell. This morning, the Holy Spirit is already falling upon us. Hallelujah. As we are receiving. As we are receiving. Ask. You don't have to wait till the end of the sermon. You don't have to wait for the altar call. You don't have to wait for nice worship music to come. But you can just sit where you are and say, Lord, more. Lord, give me more. Reset. You know, the more you relax, meaning the more you believe, the more you receive. The more you believe, the more you receive. Not the other way around. I receive first, then I believe. That's the world. The world says, I want to feel something first then I'm going to receive it. Then I, then I know that I have received it. Nothing to feel. Just believe that you receive it. Do you believe this morning? Do you believe that the Holy Spirit wants to give, that God the Father wants to give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Just receive. The Holy Spirit fell. While Pastor Sam was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. Hallelujah. You just heard the word and you just received it. It was not Pastor Sam's faith, it is your faith. Hallelujah. You sit there and say, I receive, Lord. I receive, Lord. I receive more, more, more of you, Holy Spirit. There's a song huh, that goes, More, more, more. I want more, more, more. More of you, Jesus. Relax. Verse, John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, Anyone thirst? What do you do? Let him come to me and drink. Relax. Verse 38, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said. What starts first? Does the river flow first or the believing start first? Believe first. Believe first. Don't wait and say, when I see, then I believe. No, just believe. He who believes in me, just believe. As the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters, ready to flow out of us. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those who believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So the glorifying, after Jesus was glorified, the Spirit of God came upon his people. So we just relax. So we believe. After relaxing, what we do? We request, we relax. The next thing we do is receive. Good student, one student. Hallelujah. All of us. Huh? Receive. So how do we receive? 
it goes here without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. Just receive by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. Christians, we believers in Christ, we walk by faith. By faith, we believe that we receive. By faith, we believe we receive healing. By faith, we receive. Not after we see the manifestation of healing. We receive by faith. By faith, we receive. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe. Must believe. What is believing? Believing is relaxing, that He exists. Relaxing in the, in the, in the understanding that God exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. That's the kind of God we serve. And then Acts 2.38 again. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what are the three things that we saw so far? Number one is request. Every morning what do we do? We request. Every afternoon, what do we do? We request. Every night, what do we do? We request. Right through the day, we drink. This is our relationship with God. This is our intimacy with God. This is our walk with God. We keep on requesting. Not as slaves, but we request as sons. Knowing that God is pleased. God is ready to give us. Then we relax and we just receive it in the name of Jesus. Relax is just believing that God hears us. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We just relax in that. Some of us are too tense up, including myself sometimes. I get too tense up. But God says, just relax. Just relax. Just believe that you receive it. Alright? Why? Because we want to strive. We want to perform. We want to do something to receive. But God says, you can do nothing to receive. You are receiving based on the finished work of Christ on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he said what? It is finished. What does it mean by it is finished? This is very important. This is a very important revelation. What does Jesus mean by it is finished? That means everything that Jesus was supposed to do on earth is already finished. There is nothing else that Jesus needs to do on earth. Everything is done. Otherwise, Jesus would have said what? It is almost finished. But what did Jesus say on the cross? It is finished. Then we have the book of Acts. So, Jesus said finished, that means what? We also finish lah. No, it's not that. It means he says, he's, what Jesus is supposed to do has already been done. There is nothing else that Jesus is going to do. Wow, this is strange teaching. So what are we here for? We are here to do what Jesus has called us to do. This is the next chapter. We have been given power, we have been given authority by the cross of Jesus Christ, by what Jesus has done. And from this point onwards, it is us. We are here to call, we are called to proclaim Claim the kingdom of God. We are called to heal the sick. We are here, we are called to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. We carry on. The things that I do, you will also do. This is the season we will also do. Greater things will we do because I go to the Father. And he's speaking about the Holy Spirit. Us being restored. Walking on the kingdom of God. If we are crying out here and asking, what is Jesus about to do on the earth? Jesus said, it is finished. I've already done. And from now onwards, is the church of Jesus Christ. This is the age of the church. This is the age of each and every one of us, brothers and sisters. It's the age of every one of us. So no one can come here and preach about what Jesus is about to do. Jesus has already done it on the cross. And from now, he has placed his authority upon us. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Carrying the power and the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. That's what we're called to do. 
proclaiming the kingdom of heaven, proclaiming God's love, proclaiming the finished work of the cross, proclaiming the righteousness of God, proclaiming the shalom of God. Jesus, don't ask Jesus to come and proclaim shalom over you. We are called to proclaim. He says, every house you go, what are we supposed to do? Speak peace. Speak shalom over that house. In the Greek, it's Irene. It means the same thing. Wholeness. Completeness. Everywhere you go, proclaim shalom. Don't go there and say, Jesus, please la, help these people. Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. And now it is the age of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In each and every one of us. It's the age of the Holy Spirit. So what are we supposed to do? First of all, we are supposed to Request every day. If you have not requested before, today is the first time, request. Request as a son. Second thing, relax or believe. The third thing is, receive. Receive. Receive by faith. And the next one, final one, number four, is release. As you go, preach, saying, what are we supposed to do? This is what we are called to do. After Jesus finished his work, the finished work of the cross. Jesus finished his work. We are after the cross. As you go, this is what we are called to do. Preach. What are we supposed to say? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and this is how it manifests. As we proclaim the kingdom, the kingdom manifests in this way. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely keep inside our pocket. Alright? The more we receive, the more we keep in our pocket. No. Freely we have received, freely give. Freely you have received. Have you received? The question is, have you received? Freely you have received. You don't have to pay for it. Why is it free? Because of what Christ has done on the cross. He has paid the price in full. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all look very excited. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus has paid the price in full. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the kingdom of God. This is what we are called to do. Proclaim. We are called to release. Don't keep it inside. Because if you keep it inside, what happens? You forget about it. Or you take it for granted. Or you find that there's no use for it. Or you use it for other things. But it says, freely you have received. What have we received from God? Freely give. We have received the kingdom of heaven. Very important after this. After we release. There's one more R. Remain or abide. Jesus said in John chapter 5. John chapter 15. I'm the vine. You are the branches. John chapter 15 verse 5. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain. Remain in my love. Remain in the Holy Spirit. Remain in the Holy Spirit. This is what we are called to do. Remain in His love. If you keep my commands, verse 10, John 15, verse 10, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's command and remain in His love. Verse 18, do not get drunk on wine. John, Ephesians chapter 5, actually verse 18, to remain. Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit daily. Be filled. Be filled again and again and again. This is what the meaning of this verse is. Not just once, but to be filled. Every day when you step out of the house, I want to be clothed with power from on high. When you get up from bed, where we be clothed with power from on high. Speak to one another with psalms, with hymns, with songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This attitude of gratitude brings the kingdom of heaven. Releases the kingdom of heaven from our lives into lives that are around us. Giving thanks to the Father. You know, having this attitude, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. You know what's the answer to depression? The answer to depression is giving thanks. Very simple. You know what's the answer to complaining 
and murmuring and grumbling and backbiting, you know what's the answer? Giving thanks. Giving thanks to God the Father. Pastor, I got nothing in my life to give thanks for. Everything is in a mess. Have you ever heard yourself say that? Now give thanks to God for the fresh air that you breathe. Yeah, the air also got haze, lah, Pastor. Now MCO no haze, what? Because they cannot burn down the forest. The air is clean. Give thanks for the air. Give thanks for the sky. Give thanks for your family members. I tell you what, I just want to encourage you this week, you know, what the best way to welcome the kingdom of God into each and every one of our lives, to enter into His gates, into the gates of the kingdom of heaven with thanksgiving, His courts with praise, is to start by giving thanks. It might be hard for some of us, especially in the day and age that we are living now, but start giving thanks to God for the little things. I started just by small things, little things. Just little things in your house. You know, thank God that I have a house. Thank God I have three meals a day. Some even more, All right, as you can see. Give thanks to God for everything. Give thanks to God for the church. I, you know, I, sometimes I get up in the morning, I'm, so, I'm filled with so much of gratefulness for this church. He says, Lord, we are so blessed to have such a good church, such a good media team, such a good worship team, such a good members in the church. You know, we are so blessed. I just begin to give thanks to God. And sometimes I just tell my wife, it just overflows. I'll tell my wife, I said, you know, we are so blessed, you know, to be in this church. And of course, my wife will agree. You know, because many times I mumble and grumble and complain about everything. Government, la, politics, la, all those kind of things. We start giving thanks to God. And you find that our attitude begins to change. We begin to see things differently when we begin to... That's how, that's how God designed us. We are not... We are not designed to mumble and grumble. That's why people fall sick, because they come out of the design of God. Now you want to know what is the key to staying healthy? Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for everything and you find that you are healthy. Your mind is healthy, your heart is healthy, your life is healthy, your physical body is healthy. Every part of us is healthy when we begin to give thanks to God. Giving thanks to God the Father for, what does it say? For what? For Everybody say it together. For everything. For everything it says there. Giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is how we are filled with the Spirit again. It says here what? Instead be filled with the Spirit. How? By speaking to one another. We are filled with the Spirit when we speak to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and making music in our heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do that every day, we are filled with the Spirit. What an easy way to be filled with the Spirit. By singing, declaring the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God over our lives and our families. Find something to give thanks to God for this week. One thing. Can you find one thing to give thanks to God for, for this week? Just one thing. And he says that he will fill us with his spirit. Just remain in him. This is how we remain in the spirit. Why many times we don't feel the Holy Spirit? Because we've gone to outside God's plan and God's desire. The Father created us to worship him. To love him with all our hearts. That is why you and I were created. To love him with all our hearts. Soul mind and strength and to love our neighbor, to put our affections on him, that he is above all things. I set my affections upon you, Lord. You are above all things, above the circumstances that are around me, above the, 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 the challenges that, that this country is facing, above all the politics. I set my affections. I rise higher than everything else that is around me. I say, Lord, I love you with all my heart, soul, mind and strength. And then the same is, I love my neighbor as myself. As you do that, you find that loving your neighbor, esteeming your neighbor, helping your neighbor, who is your neighbor, the people that we come into contact with every day, you find that it's easy. Making music in your heart to the Lord. When's the last time we found ourselves just humming to the Lord, just singing to the Lord? You know, last time as, as I was lying down and I was just thinking and meditating about all these things as, as the, the, the word of the Lord was saying, I was just declaring and just singing and making melody. I didn't even try. It was not even an effort. It was effortless. Suddenly, I found myself just singing to the Lord. 
He says, I can see you now. I, I can see the love that you have in your eyes. You know, your, your grace is so amazing, Lord. You know, I just, just started singing to the Lord, just giving thanks to God the Father for everything, for everything. Just giving thanks to Him for everything. And that's how we remain. And finally, last slide. And when they had prayed, it says the place where they were assembled was shaking together after they prayed and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You know, they were just filled again when they prayed. We sing, praise, worship, give thanks to God, pray. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with a sense of the clothing with power from on high. And they were able to speak the word of God with boldness. The last one. Let's recap. So how are we to be clothed with power from on high? How are we to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? How are we to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit? He says the first thing, the last slide, is to request. As we mentioned here. Number one is to request. Ask God. Ask God as a son and a daughter. Next one is to relax. Just four things. And we're going to ask uh, musicians to come up. And we're just going to sing that last song again. Third thing is to receive and ultimately is to release and to remain. Just four things. Every day. Request, relax, receive, release. And one more thing is to remain. Just remain. Just stay. Alright? Why don't we stand? Why don't we stand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And as we stand this morning, just take a few more minutes, maybe one or two minutes, just to, just to practice receiving the clothing of power from on high. Just to receive in the name of Jesus. Now I know that there's, there's a lot of things that might resist us this morning and try to push us down and try to put a darkness over us, but don't allow that. Just relax and just receive. Receive from the Holy Spirit. Just take a few minutes. What, what do we have to lose this morning? By receiving the Holy Spirit, by being clothed, because that re-establishes us, us in our original design. What we were designed to do. Hallelujah. We were designed to be fruitful and to multiply. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God, the dominion of God on earth as it is in heaven. That's that's the greater things, church. So this morning we just want to do this, Lord. We just want to request. Can we request this morning? I just want to encourage us. Go ahead. Open your mouth wherever you are. You want to whisper out. Just request. Ask Jesus. Say, Jesus, fill me again. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Let's take a few minutes and make this a practice right throughout the day. Let's make this practical, church. We don't want to come and listen in church a message that we cannot use. But we want to listen to something that we can practice every day. We want to request, request, request. Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus. Make it a practice. Walk with the Father. You know, grow in our intimacy with God. Grow in our fellowship with our, with our Heavenly Father. You know, just keep asking Jesus. Ask. Say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Fill me with more, Lord. I want more, Lord. I'm seeking, Lord. And keep on seeking. I'm knocking and I'll keep on knocking, Lord. And, and just relax. As you request, just relax. And say, Lord, just, I just relax. I just believe that I have it, Lord. Because without faith, it is impossible to please you. We who come to you must believe that you are. You are real, Lord. You are real, as real as the person standing next to me, Lord. You are real and you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. So I relax, Lord. As I seek you diligently, Lord God, you reward me with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Just, just fill me, Lord. And just, just relax in the presence of God. Don't strive. Ask Him and just rest. Wherever you may be, if you have never received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Just do this. Simple. Just request and relax. Believe. Believe that you have it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And then receive in the name of Jesus. Come on. Just receive. Hallelujah. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit where you may be right now. Just receive. Just receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh Lord, I just receive, Lord, give thanks to you, Lord. Give thanks to you, Lord. Remove, Lord, hallelujah, every bitterness, Lord. Oh, remove, Lord, Father, everything that is not of you, every sickness, every disease, Lord, every negativity, every discouragement, every disappointment. Oh, every gossip, every backbiting, every hurt, every disappointment. Fill me, Lord, with a thankfulness, a heart of thankfulness, a heart of thanksgiving, Lord. Singing, making melody in my heart, Lord, unto you, Lord. She andalaba, se andalaba. Release it, friends. Se kiri andalaba, so rabahandalaba, seriande. Release the kingdom of heaven by declaring, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven. Every week as we come and do the declarations, we are declaring, hallelujah, the kingdom of heaven. We are declaring radical conversions in our land. Then Malaysia will be a model rainbow nation release it church with the Holy Spirit hallelujah with the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah oh there will be mass hallelujah mass salvations Father God all across this land Father God people being baptized hallelujah shake and becoming sons and daughters come on prophesy prophesy release the gifts I am clothed see yourself clothed with power clothed with power from on high, Shimbara Haya Maso, wherever you are, He Torahaya Base, Hallelujah, sons and daughters of God, manifesting the glory of God everywhere we go. Shebere Andalaha, Sebe Oda, Hallelujah, every negativity gone, Lord, Shere Andalama, every disease gone, He Karabahandala, So Rabahaya Base, Fire, Lord, Oh, clothe me with fire, receive. Lord, I relax and I receive the fire of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Gracious Father, Shea from this day, Lord, from this day, going forth in the power of the Holy Ghost. From this day, being clothed with power from on high, from on high. Conscious Lord, hallelujah, speaking the word of God with boldness. Speaking and decreeing with boldness, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, releasing the kingdom, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, sons and daughters, Lord, releasing the kingdom everywhere we go, Lord. We release the kingdom, Lord. We release righteousness, Lord. Oh, we release joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, every depression has to go. Every hurt has to go. Every disappointment has to go. In the name of Jesus, as we are clothed, we receive the clothing. We receive the clothing. We receive the clothing. Hallelujah. And we release it. Receive and release. Receive and release. Receive and release. Oh, Rabbi Yandala, Shea Yandala Bahaya. And we remain. And we remain in you, Lord. Ere Yandala Bari Yandala Boy Yandala Bari Yandala Every day, every moment, Lord, we want to be refreshed, Lord, in your presence. Hallelujah. Oh, let times of refreshing come once again. Hallelujah. A fresh new flow of your river, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Enjoy the river. Hallelujah. Yeah.
eyes open, open, open the kingdom of God. Release, 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 release. As you go, as you go, as you go, proclaim the kingdom of God is at hand. Just receive, hallelujah. This is what we want to do night and day, day and night, Lord. Oh, not just in church, Lord, but every day. In our car, Lord, going to work, we want to receive, hallelujah. We want to sing a song of worship, Lord, of praises unto you, giving thanks to you. As we go for our walks, Lord, we want to sing, hallelujah. As we cook, Lord, we want to sing, hallelujah. As we wash the toilet, Lord, we want to sing, hallelujah, to the living God. As we play our instruments, we say, hallelujah. Freely we have received, freely we give. Freely we receive, we give again and again and again and again and again. Hallelujah. Manifest your glory, Lord, everywhere we go. Your glory is manifested, Lord. The sick are healed, hallelujah. The blind begin to see, hallelujah. The deaf begin to hear, hallelujah. The lame begin to walk, hallelujah. For the kingdom of God is at hand, is at hand, hallelujah. Those unbelieving, Lord, become believers, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, we clothe with power from on high. We clothe with power from on high. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come and fill me. Come anoint me. Come anoint me. Come on, everybody reach out to God. Come me. Fresh me, sweet spirit of the Lord. Come and feel again and again and again. Come and all me, spirit of the Lord, sweet spirit. Come be fresh me. Sweet Spirit, sweet Spirit of the Lord. Everybody, come and feel me. Every day we sing, Lord, come and join me. I want to be in the sweet Spirit, Lord. Come be fresh me. Everybody sing. Sweet spirit of the Lord.
church but this is what we have to do every day church the rest of our lives this is our occupation this is our purpose this is our destiny this is what we do every day asking the sweet spirit of god to come and fill us every day every moment come anoint me every moment when i go to work when i'm at work everywhere that i go i have a purpose i have a destiny and that comes through the filling of the holy spirit every day not just in church not just on sunday morning not just on wednesday now not just in one or two you know times when we pray but fill me and anoint me refresh me fill me anoint me refresh me fill me anoint me refresh me holy spirit every moment of the day by giving praise giving thanks giving glory to god hallelujah singing with psalms making melody hallelujah giving thanks to god for everything church that is a lifestyle that is a lifestyle of a new covenant believer hallelujah releasing the kingdom of god releasing the power of god everywhere we go in the mighty name of jesus lord even as we depart from this place this is not the beginning but th this is not the end but this is the beginning lord hallelujah as we step out father god we carry father we are conscious lord of the kingdom of god that is within us lord god father we want to thank you every day let that consciousness grow father grow father grow father god as the name of this church is lord god continue to grow father god lord in each and every one of our lives and father let the rivers of living waters father god be released father Father God, through your children, everywhere we go, Father God, rivers of living waters, Father God, Lord, that brings life, that brings healing, that bring, re, brings refreshing, that brings restoration, that brings revival, Father God, Lord, Father, in our working places, Father God, Lord, in our schools, in our homes, in the streets, Father, Lord of this land, Father God, let the clothing, Father, of the power from on high continue to increase and increase a consciousness, Lord, that we are clothed father with power from our we are a supernatural people lord place on this earth father god we are a blessed people father place on this earth father to proclaim your love lord god everywhere we go lord we give you praise father god lord we declare once again may the grace of our lord jesus christ how much we need that grace lord may the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and always in jesus name we pray and all god's people say Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, refreshed, blessed week. In Jesus' name. Amen.